Settling down. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yan. Wow. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you are here with us today. Are you here? Are you here? Yeah. Yeah. You might just be bodily present here, but your mind might be somewhere else. So I'm just checking, <laughs> just making sure that you're here physically, mentally, spiritually before we start. And uh, praise the Lord for what He's doing. Uh, just since this morning, umaga pa lang, we have you know, the move of God, uh, allowing Him to do what it is that gusto niyang gawin sa atin. So praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for Tito Leo. Thank you, Tito Leo, for praying. Uh, thank you as well for you know emceeing and uh, worship hosting. I believe that you know uh, Tito Leo is a, a prayer warrior, and that when the Lord says something to him, he really obeys the Lord. And uh, if you're here and you received those words, you received yung yung prayer na yon, claim it in the spirit. You know when we're praying, I encourage everyone that look uh, look beyond what is going on in the physical and know that when we're praying, there's really power. There's really power in the spirit. Amen po ba? I mean, there's, there's like this warfare that we're doing every time that we're praying, right? And speaking of wars, uh, we have our to topic and lesson today. And our lesson today is uh, wars. It's a very timely lesson, I believe. It's, it's wars and rumors of war, the reassuring signs of Jesus. Uh, very simple, very easy is our text for today. It's just one verse. So we'll be quick. Amen. Right? It'll be quick. It's Matthew 24, 6. Um, but we will go ahead and first see the context. So if I may please ask everyone to rise. And we will just read the context of our verse for today. And we'll go straight into it. So we are in Matthew 24. We're going to read from verses 3 to 8. Uh, let's read it all together, please, in the 1, 2, 3 now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for your word for today. I pray, God, that as we, di as we dissect your word, as we study your word, as we preach your word, that you will be the one to speak into each and every one of us, and it will be a rima word, and you will be the one to speak into the hearts of the people, Lord. Lord, sanctify my mouth and even my heart, Lord, as we deliver this message, and allow the Holy Spirit to move mightily in our hearts today. Thank you, Lord Father. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We can be seated, please. All right. Uh, before we start, I'd like to share a testimony of what God has done. I don't think we've shared yet, or maybe you didn't know, but uh, some of us have actually came from the Philippines. During, uh, it was me, Dana, and Mom Liz. And I don't think you guys know yet what happened, so I'm going to share a little bit about what the trip was. Is that okay? Yeah, I don't think you've seen it yet, but maybe if you're following me on Instagram or on Facebook, you can see some of it. So, but here is like the, the rest of it. So there is, uh, there is a three-part event that we attended in the Philippines, okay? So we have the 40th anniversary of Christ the Living Stone Fellowship. Palapakan nga po natin ng Lord for that. Yeah, that is uh, 40 years and... I didn't really understand the significance of how big that was till you're actually there. And I hope to be able to share some of that to us today. And next, we had our CLSF ICTC International Campsite and Training Center Groundbreaking. Okay, so, 
So what is ICTC? It just simply means uh, it's, a, it's a campsite, right? Most of the time uh, when, they, when we have camps, workers camp in the Philippines in December, they usually rent a space. Uh, God has put into Tito Dan's heart to create a building where it will be our campsite, right? And a little bit about that is that place where is the ICTC, that's the same place where Jahop is, all right? Uh, who in here knows Jahop, right? Uh, you're giving our pledges to Jahop, right? I hope and pray that we are faithful in giving because when you're actually there in Jahop, you'll see, ah, okay, this is what we are pledging for. Now you see it in person, right? And, and, and I'll have some more pictures of that later. And also, we had our 40 years, uh, sorry, first CLSF International Missions Conference. Yeah, and so uh, first CLSF International Missions Conference, all the missionaries and all the local pastors from the Philippines and all over the world gathered together in one room to give some uh, reports of what has been happening. And that was very, very exciting because it's so nice to see that we're not alone. CLSF family is not just in Canada, we're all over the world. So, uh, so first, here we have our 40th anniversary. So as you can see, it's uh, in the Inares uh, Arena, Sports Arena, October 15. And our theme is Great is Thy Faithfulness. So being up for natin yun. Great is thy faithfulness. Yeah, and hashtag great is thy faithfulness. So maybe if you uh, search on Instagram, on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, hashtag yan, makita niyo po tayo dyan. Uh, so it was very nice, a lot of celebrations, a lot of dancing. Uh, next is, yan, yan po. So as you can see, nandyan po yung ating mga pastors from Windsor and CLSF uh, Mississauga. So us being there, parang nandyan na rin kayo. Right? Yeah, it's like you're already there too. You're, we are representing us that we're also there. And then we have here with, uh, oh, sorry. It's not working. Okay, so also there, you know, Tita Marie was there. Uh, Tita Gemma was there too. And we had, we had an amazing time. It was really, really nice. It was fun. And we get to meet, uh, yun yung first time that we met some of the brethren. It was big. The place was really big. Um, yeah. And then next is we have our ICTC groundbreaking in San Miguel, Bulacan. So, uh, Bulacan is the place where Tito Philip and Tita Mila is from, right? Uh, yan po yung, as I was saying earlier, this place is where, uh, it's not working. It's, it's this, so the, the picture you see on the right, that's the ground where the ICTC will be built. And then the one on the, oh sorry, on the one on the left is the place where the ICTC will be built. And the picture on the right hand side is the, that's where they did the groundbreaking. So yun yung parang a cornerstone. It's like the first place where they would be uh, digging. And uh, I put their hashtag 100 million because uh, that's the cost of the project of how much it would take for the ICTC to be built, right? And uh, when Tito Dan was explaining it, when, uh, you know, Jahop was, I think, I believe around 30 million pesos to build, right? And the Lord spoke to him and said, all you have to do is to put your faith times three and you'll be able to have an ICTC, right? And do you believe that God can provide for this project? Yeah. Who in here is willing to be a vessel for this project to be completed? Ask am I. Amen, amen. It should be many of us because I believe we will be uh, parang conduit or vessels of blessings for, for this. Right? And then from there, uh, from there as well, so that you can see us uh, there posing and photo. And also we were prayed by Tita Dan uh, afterwards here. So we have Tita, uh, Tita Edwina and Tita Arnel there with us being prayed. So during that time, it was also Tito, uh, Tito Arnold's 60th birthday. So they also prayed for us. And I want to share the prayer because I believe that that prayer is very timely today. Tito Dan prophesied na any sickness and diseases that they may have, once they come back here to Canada, they will be healed. right? And we believe that that healing is also available for us today. 
right? Nakabalik na kami dito. So it means that that word stands. Now, whatever sickness and diseases that we have here in this church, in our leadership, for every one of us, that we are healed in the name of Jesus. Do you believe? Yeah, let's receive that. Amen. Let's let's give God. Palapaan po natin ng Lord. Yeah, we have. Uh, we are healed already. And you know, uh, with Tito Noli, we know that we are battling with him and we are praying for him. And we believe that he is already healed, right? And uh, and also, uh, I learned something about Bulacan. Okay, in San Miguel, Bulacan. Uh, on the way to Bulacan, you know, it's a nice ride from Manila. It's about, I think, an hour and a half. Uh, around that time and uh, on the way there I was sleeping and then uh, right when we're close by you do a little bit like this in the in the on the road and I'm like what's going on and yun pala yung the roads in Bulacan are, are to where this job is very bumpy so I'm like ah okay pag bumpy na nasa Bulacan ka na yeah and so so <laughs> so I'm like oh, okay it's 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 very bumpy but uh, yun pala sa probinsya in in the province side you know, you have the unpaved roads, uh, which is very normal. And uh, yeah, so na, na, ano po natin yun. And the next is our international missions conference. So right after the, right after nung, ano po natin, nung sa ICTC, we went straight to Kandaba, Pampanga. Anyone here from Pampanga? Woo! Woo! Four people. <laughs> Four people, yeah. And so we had our first international missions conference. So first, because it was the first time that international missionaries came to the to the missions conference because usually it is just the pastors and missionaries from the philippines that go but now because we have canada we have saudi arabia uh we have chennai uh, chiang mai uh, i think which is thailand uh they made it international right and it's the first Right, because we were there. So we were there, kasama po tayo niyan, and I pray that next year there will be second, kayo naman. Right? Kayo naman ang magpunta there and, 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 you know, have that. So ayan po. And we had a beautiful surprise birthday party for Tito Arnel, and uh, the pastors honored him. And uh, it was a great time the first night that we were there. And also, we get to meet, uh, yeah, yeah, that's the place that we were in. Wow, di ba? It's called Shepherd's Palace. Wow. <laughs> and it looks like castles and a lot of swimming pool, right? Philippines, it's a lot of swimming pool. And it was so, uh, it was so refreshing because on the, on the pool, it says blessed and thankful, uh, favored. And I think uh, one of them says glory to God. So I believe uh, I was a pastor that owns this place and it was really nice. Yeah. Ayan. And then I get to meet some of the uh, Tita Nilda, which is uh, Tita Julie's uh, sister. Yeah, and sister. She was there and she was sharing stories about Saudi Arabia, how uh, CLSF is thriving in Saudi Arabia. You know, it's interesting because in Saudi, they cannot openly uh, do services like this, right? But yet, even though it's like that, the the church is growing and more and more people are knowing God. And, and I realize now it's so big. Saudi is so big and there's so many different churches in, in Saudi and, and also not also not only in Saudi, but all over the world. We have some in Brunei, we have some in, in Asia and even Turks and Caicos and like the Caribbeans, uh, in Cook Island that Tito Dan was talking about, the ends of the the world, the ends of the earth, right? That's, uh, there is CLSF all over the world. So the way that you can imagine it, it's like, take us and just put it into the different parts of the world, right? Over 500 churches we have all over the world. And you know, uh, glory to God for that. And because from there, you get to see the different, uh, uh, parang different ways on how the churches are thriving, how CLSF is, thri is thriving. And if there's one thing that we learn from here, every member is a minister. Can we say that? Every member is a minister. Every single one uh, of us here, we are trained. You know what? If you go to one place, then you can start a small group that can turn to a Bible study, that can turn to a church. Everywhere we go, God can God gives us that anointing to start and to plant churches. And yeah, uh, the bottom left is uh, bottom left side is uh, me and Tito Dan. 
I'll tell you a little secret. You know, many people like to take picture with Tito Dan, but secret lang ah, during this time, siya yung nagpa-picture sa akin. Wow! <laughs> and then, uh, no, but, eh, but sabi niya, oh, well, picture tayo, being picture tayo. Yeah, sabi ko, oh, sige bro, dito. Yeah, yeah. So, we, we took that picture. And, yeah, Ma'am Liz was sharing about the good things that God is doing in us here in Mississauga. So, you can see there, yeah, and, uh, we shared the website, and we have a full clip. Ma'am Liz was amazing to share uh, what God is doing. Yeah, so, um, and then we also celebrated some families and birthdays. It was also Dana's birthday. Yeah, and we went to Punta Fuego, and then we had some nice lunches, right? And my hashtag for that is, wish you were here. Yeah, and yeah we just wish that you were there to experience it. And then that's uh, uh, my family. We got some time to meet with our family. And if you can uh, see one of the photos there, it might look familiar. We have Kuya John there. He was there, and now he is here. Yeah, and so praise the Lord. Yan po, kasi ni ni Dana po yan. So praise the Lord. Yeah, and, uh, and and so we had a great time. Uh, but why am I sharing all this, right? Is there a, is there a connect? Well, when you go from here to the Philippines, there's a mode of transportation that you usually need to take. What is that? Jeep, <laughs> maybe the boat, right? No, but it's the it's the airplane. Right, it's the airplane, and uh, praise God because on our way back we had a mini upgrade. Uh, actually, it's an upgrade from the Lord and Ganda. We were in the place where there's so much leg room at the back there, and we had so much space. And I said, Lord, this is an unexpected blessing that you're giving to us, and glory to God. And, you know, and you know, Lord, thank you because we had this opportunity to go. But uh, when when we are in the airplane, there's usually uh, sa- there's usually a sec- safety video that they do or the security or safety training that they put you into. And there's this very, very important sign that you need to know. You know what that is? The exit sign? Yeah, maybe the exit sign. Okay, what else? Fasten your seatbelts. Yeah, so this one, do you know this sign? Yeah, yeah, maybe CJ will know. She knows the sign. But this is the seatbelt sign, right? And this seatbelt sign is very important. Why? They tell you, no matter what happens, if you see the seatbelt sign, okay, you go back to your seat. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You're in the washroom, the seatbelt sign go on, you, you go to your seat. You're standing up, seatbelt sign come on, you go to your seat. It doesn't matter what you're sitting down, your seatbelt is not on, you still have to put your seatbelt on, right? You're eating and, you know, you have you don't have your seatbelt on, the sign comes on, you have to put your seatbelt on, no matter what. And sorry na lang kung, kung papunta na sa'yo yung pagkain, because if the food is coming to you and seatbelt sign comes on, guess what? Even the flight attendants, what do they do? They, they cannot serve you because the seatbelt sign is on. This sign is so powerful in that airplane, right? And uh, and also, one of the things that they do is they, they tell you that when the seatbelt sign is on, you're going to get some turbulence, right? You get some turbulence. It's usually a sign that there is a turbulence that is that is going to happen. So, you know, uh, and, and I, s- I talk about this sign because in our passage today, uh, Jesus is talking about signs. Right. Jesus is talking about signs. And if we're going to read Matthew 24, 6, we're going to learn what is the sign and what is the sign pointing to. And what do we do with it? Right. Because now we have the sign. What do we what do we do with it? Right. So we're going we're gonna to read it one more time. Matthew 24, 6 says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, so from here, we have three things. The sign that Jesus gives, gives us, the sign that Jesus gives, gives us unavoidable caution, which is to hear, and a present provision, and a future graduation. Okay, so unavoidable caution, present provision, and a future graduation. Just, so just a few contexts from here. Uh, 
just the context for me. So what's happened here is that they were just coming. So the beginning of the chapter, they were just coming from the temple. And Jesus just prophesied and have told the disciples that this temple that you're seeing right now, where you are worshiping, it will be destroyed. That's number one. Secondly, they were just they were going from the temple, going to the Mount of Olives. So there was a there was quite a walk going from the temple, going to the Mount of Olives. And while they were in there, the disciples were asking, "Lord, when will this destruction be?" And they had this question, "Lord, when will these things that you said is going to happen be?" They were curious. And at this time, it was a private meeting, meaning it was there was not a big crowd. It was just for the select few, the select few disciples. So they were asking, when are these signs going to be? And they asked Jesus, when will you be coming and when will the end of the age be? Okay. So, uh, so Jesus says, this is his response, uh, and you will hear of war. So Jesus said, these things will happen when you start to see these signs, right? Uh, it starts off, so if you read just a few verses before this, you will see that uh, there are a few signs that Jesus is giving. So one sign he says was there will be deception, right? There will be deception that was that's going to happen. And then uh, many will say that I am the Christ first. And then he goes on and talks about this one, which is the wars. And then after, afterwards, he talks about famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. You know, we're tackling this in our Bible study, and it, there's a lot to unpack in these few verses. There's a lot of signs. If you study these signs, it is, there's a lot of things to uncover. Uh, and today, we'll just talk about one sign, which is the wars, as, as we have already said. So, uh, the first thing is that Jesus says that there will be, you will hear of wars, okay? You will hear of wars. So that's one of the signs that Jesus is saying. And it's like, uh, you know, when, when, when we say, when we hear the word will, it is like, what, what does that mean? It's for sure, right? It will happen. It's not a matter of if. It's you will hear of it. And you know, the beautiful thing about this is Jesus gives us a caution. And what is a caution? It is a what? Like a warning, right? One definition says it is to advise against or ad advise for. Right? So there is this warning that, uh, that, that, that Jesus has said. He said, you will hear of it. You know, when, when it, it's like in the airplane, okay, going back to the airplane, when the when the uh, the crew says, you know, you will experience moments where we have to put on the signs, and this is what you do. It's it's like that. It's you have already been pre-warned that this sign is coming and this this uh, light will come on, and so that when it comes on, you know what to do. Are you with me? Yeah. So at least this way, when you put you had the sign, you know, okay, I need to go back to my seat and I know what I need to do. So you will hear of wars. Um, the next, the next word here, uh, the next word here is, is the word here, okay, here. And uh, the word here, here is the word akuo, akuo, okay, which is to hear and and listen. And one of the definition of it is also uh, to listen to reports, right? It's not just, you know, when I was meditating upon this, Lord, why, why here? Uh, so number one, you told us that war is coming, uh, that there's definite times that you, we will hear of wars, but uh, why hearing? You know, maybe back in those days, they don't have what? Social media, right? <laughs> what is their social media? Word of mouth. That is their social media. It's like, you know, when when one word is released, it 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 travels fast. And how do we know that word travels fast? Because it says there are rumors of wars. What happens when we have rumors and gossips? What happens? Come on, it's okay. <laughs> it's normal. I know it doesn't happen into our church, <laughs> but you know, when rumors happen, when gossip happens, it the word travels fast, right? 
And uh, that's why I believe when you say Jesus says you will hear, of course, because the hearing part of it is, is very fast. You, uh, when news travels, it is first heard before it is seen, right? Because in order for you to see a news that's happening, you actually have to be there in that place where it's happening. But hearing, it's quite fast. They, you know, you hear something, news comes out, it's fast. Like social media, for example, you post one thing, right? Everyone knows about it. I don't have to individually tell you what's going on in my life for you to know about my life. You just have to go and exit, look at look at my uh, social media, and you will hear. Okay, this is what's happening to him. Okay, uh, and and uh, and I believe too, because one of the definitions of hearing here is the word uh, is is to listen to reports, right? And what where do reports come from nowadays? News, right? News, right? Um, and so here we're going to look at some news today. Right. So some of the news that we're hearing about wars are Russia versus Ukraine, right? And how long has this war have been? Um, like over a year, right? And what else? What other wars can we think of right now? We have Israel versus Hamas, right? Until today, it's uh, it's been over a month now since it first started, right? It's huge there is wars happening and what is a rumor of war that we can also know very close to us philippines china right what's going on in china china is trying to occupy the west philippine sea <laughs> i need to do this the west philippine sea right and do you know why china would like to occupy that piece of not land, <laughs> piece of water, right? There is, so the reason they want is because they want to actually conquer Taiwan. They want to have a military strategic advantage over Taiwan. So that's why they want to conquer that side of the Philippines. And I was reading up on this. It's more of a strategic military uh, reason why they, they want to do that, right? So, but, but what's going on? Because if, if, they're seeing that this is happening then we have the u.s getting starting to get involved if let's say that were to happen because we are allies with u.s right so there's this rumors of wars right there's uh no not yet war but maybe war <laughs> it's a rumor right um and one thing i want us to understand is that when we talk about war you know the the word war is the word polemos it means war battle combat or a dispute, a strife, or a quarrel, okay? The next verse says that nation will go against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Sometimes I look at this news and I think, Lord, is there a war happening? What would happen if there was a war that broke out here in Canada? Have you imagined that? Right? It's a little bit hard to imagine. Why? Because we feel like Canada is a peaceful nation. <laughs> Canada is a place where, you know, we don't really have enemies, right? But I want us to, I want to encourage you to rethink that. Because the Bible says nation against nation. Nation doesn't necessarily mean countries. Nation means a group of people. And a group of people doesn't necessarily have to be in, a con in, in their native country to be a nation. You can have, like here, us in uh, CLSF, we are a nation of Filipinos because we are common ground. We are coming from a, a uh, same set of people, same set of background. A nation doesn't have to be a country. It's just a group of people. And what is happening now, right? We have this, <laughs> BLM versus the police. What is that? It's a nation of people who stand for specific, uh, I guess, specific beliefs, right? And then you have the police, which is, you know, a specific nation to a group of people, right? And we, we've seen this from the years past. But how about this? Nation against nation. We're seeing protests happening 
in Canada, in different parts of the U.S., here in our backyard, Toronto, right? Some of us, uh, I hear, even in schools, there are people demonstrating, right? What? So you will see this protest. It's from a specific group of people, the Palestinians. But what happens if you don't agree with what they are saying? Like, for example, the Bible tells us that to, to bless Israel. Right? So there is that conflict. <laughs> right? And when we look at the word war, right? the war says it's a dispute, it's a strife, it's a quarrel. Right? So even in our backyard, it may not be the war that we think it is, that it's the war of, of military, but it could be a war of beliefs. And it says kingdom against kingdom. You know, there's only two types of kingdom. Kingdom of God and kingdom of the devil. Right? And there's only really two places where you will side into. And the question is, which side are we in? Which side are we going to be in? Because at the end of the day, forget into the day, Gabi na. No. At the end of the day, uh, we have... You know, there's only one na one group of people that you can side in. Are you going to be in the kingdom of God or are you going to be in the kingdom of the devil, right? But that's, that's not the focus for today. What I want us to focus on is that there are signs going on around us. We must wake up! <laughs> I, was read I, was, I was watching Brother Saudi's uh, messages. The time is drawing near. Like, wake up! Wake up, because if, if us Christians are not seeing the signs, we are headed in big trouble. We are headed in big trouble. In our, in our prayer meetings, Joel nailed this like really hard in the head, that the, the, this point that we're talking about today. You know, we have to pray because we we have to open our eyes to what's going on around us. It's not just sweet by and by church. It's not just our regular church services anymore. We know that we are in a spiritual warfare. Yes? Yes, we are. However, there will be a coming time when the battle will also be physical. Right? Maybe there's takbuhan here, takbuhan there. Can't preach the gospel here, can't congregate here. There's that going to be a coming time. Ask your neighbor and say, are you fit? <laughs> are you fit? Ask your neighbor, are you fit for war? <laughs> are you fit for physical running? <laughs> right? Are you fit? <laughs> right? Because there is going to be that side of it. And, it. and by the way, I'm sharing this not because I want to scare us, but to prepare us. Because if the signs are here and they are speaking to us right here, then we must listen. We must hear. We must see. Right? So war. So going back to my point. So how, and, and, and the Bible says here, and in and, and the next verse it says, so you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. And the Bible says, see that you are not troubled. Okay? And this is the encouragement that the Bible is, uh, that Jesus is speaking about today. So, uh, the, the advice right after that, after Jesus says that you will hear of wars, is like, see that we are not troubled. But Lord, how do we do that? How do we, let's say, how do we calm ourselves? And how do we see this into the right perspective? So G Jesus gives us a present provision. So the word there is see. See that you are not troubled. And now while I was meditating upon this, uh, there's a few things that God just, Give me a picture of. The word see in Greek is the word horeo, horeo, which is to perceive or to attend to. And there's another metaphorical meaning to it, which is to see using the mind or to perceive with inward spiritual perception. So seeing can be done in three levels. One is physical. Next is mental, which is what? Imagination, right? When you close your eyes, you can see things. Right? And then we have the spiritual, which is if our spiritual eyes are open, God gives us revelations to see beyond what is in our eyes naturally and in our minds and see beyond 
what is, what is here in front of us. So, and, and compared to the ears, you know, uh, when, when our eyes, so uh, I was meditating about this, the, our sight, you can only look at things pretty much like right around here, right? Like I cannot see what's behind me. If I'm not, if I'm not looking at this direction behind me, I'm not going to be able to see it unless there's a mirror. But, you know, our eyes can only focus so much, Yes. Our eyes can only see maybe up to this, maybe even up to this much, depending if you're wearing glasses or not. Right? So uh, only this much. But hearing, you know, hearing, even though I am not looking at this direction, I can hear what's behind me. Yeah? Right? So in other words, hearing, sometimes you cannot control what you hear. You cannot control what the news says. You cannot control what you're going to be able to hear with your ears. But you can control what you focus on, yeah? You can control that, hey, you know what? If I just want to look at this side, I can. I can't see this side. If I just want to look at this side, I can. Because I have the power to direct myself into looking in which certain direction I want to look into. Am I speaking to somebody? Are you getting it? Right? What I'm saying here is that even though we hear of these news, it is still up to us as to what perspective, what direction we're going to be looking at, right? If we see the wars and rumors of wars, nation against nations, kingdom against kingdoms, pestilences, what is your vision? What is your vision? What are you looking at? And Jesus says here, but see that you are not troubled that's his encouragement but lord how do we do this well what does trouble mean trouble in greek is the word throwio which is which is the term emotional uproar what is an emotional uproar to be very upset right you hear this news and what do you do oh my goodness this is just another bad news i can't live anymore and you know i i don't want to keep on going Right? And, and during one of our prayer meetings, they said that right now we have an all-time high of anxiety right now. Why? Because people don't know what to make of these wars, of what's going on around the world. But Jesus says, do not be troubled. Do not be troubled. Do not be thrown into an emotional uproar. Do not be upset. Or another word that is very important here is do not be unsettled. What does unsettled mean? confused what is confused lack of clarity you don't have clarity or a perspective as to what it is that we should be putting ourselves into and you know last year i had a client that stopped buying a house because he you know the reason was there is a war in russia and you afraid i don't want to buy a house anymore I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm like, what? Of course, you know, I sympathize and empathize. Maybe there is like some fear that's going on. But in some, you know, in an ex that's an extreme case, at least from my perspective, that, you know, the war is so far away from us to the point that you're letting it affect you to make your decisions in your day-to-day -day life. Right? Like that is, that is like, you know, that is the extreme case of, of fear and anxiety, right? So, but Jesus says, do not be troubled. And so, what should we focus our eyes on? Because I was talking to you earlier that see that we are not troubled. What do we need to focus ourselves on? And this is where we go to the next verse. And the next verse says, these things must come to pass. The, that's the good news. These things must come to pass. Before I explain it, there is a difference between hearing that there is wars and rumors of wars, but it's another for it to actually to come to pass. Are you getting that? Because hearing about wars doesn't necessarily mean that it's happening. But for wars to happen is another thing. And Jesus is saying, you will not only hear of wars, but you will also, these wars must come to pass. And if we go back 
to the analogy that we're talking about earlier, when they say that if the warning light is on in the airplane, right, that is the warning, right? Uh, but what happens, what, what you do with it is, is more important. You have to start sitting down, right? But, you know, one of the other uh, warnings that they give is they say thir about 30 minutes before the plane lands, what do they say? Uh, we are about 30 minutes from landing. And just so you know, we're going to experience heavy turbulence. And we are going to ask you to start to settle down in your seats. If you want to use the bathroom, you may. But you may use it now because a little later on, you will not have the opportunity to use the bathroom because the thing, the sign will come on again, right? But y it's one thing to, to hear that, but it's another to actually experience that. Because once the plane, now you're seated down in your plane, and once it starts to go down, then you, you feel the turbulence again going like that. Then you know, oh, okay, it's going to happen, right? And when you know it's going to happen, what's, what's going, what, what, what is, it's kind of like comforting because you know that, okay, I've been prepared that this is what is going to happen. So when it happens, I'm not surprised, right? You know, boredom, uh, I, I heard this. Boredom, you know the mind gets bored when it knows what's going to happen next. Are you bored? <laughs> you know, when, when you know what's going to happen, the mind gets, uh, the mind gets bored. The mind gets, uh, the mind tunes out. But it's, it's a similar concept about this, that when a warning, when you're already foretold of what is going to happen, you feel more at ease, right? Because, okay, if Jesus says that this is supposed to happen, then I can be assured because now I have foresight. Now, now I'm smarter. <laughs> I'm smarter than the next person because I know that the Bible already said it. So therefore, if Jesus said it, then I know I can be assured. This is what is supposed to happen. It must come to pass, right? And Jesus is saying here, do not be troubled. Why? Because these things must happen. And it's part of the plan. It's part of my plan for you. It's part of the plan of how I will redeem this world. Now, in the past, when we read the Bible, God has used wars. There has been wars in the past. The Israelites have gone into wars. Israel has gone into wars. Um, you know, the flood, for example, that was one of God's plans is to, because he wants, and usually when there is wars and there is plans of God, usually it is because he wants to purge evil out, right? He wants to, to cleanse uh, the injustice. He wants to cleanse what is wrong in the world. And you know, many people ask this question about, you know, God, if you are God, why do you allow wars? Right? Does God not see what we're going through? Do you hear that? Right? Do, do, you, do you hear? Do you, maybe you, hear, you have that question yourself. But this verse says these things must come to pass. And Jesus has spoken about wars and saying that, guys, I know. I'm not surprised about the wars. I know that they're going to happen. I know that there's going to be coming times when nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. God knows it, right? And for, you know, for people to say that God doesn't see or God doesn't care, that's not true because here in this verse, it says, surely these things will happen. These things will pass. In other words, Jesus knows the end from the beginning. He already knows that these things will happen, but there is a plan. It's not just because it has to happen. No, God has a plan. God has a purpose for this. And let me speak about, uh, let me just uh, have an encouragement here. You know, the Bible says, Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. If there is something that we can anchor our lives in, it is the word of God. It is, you know, it is knowing that, Jesus has predicted already what's going to happen. This is part of the plan. And if you gather, if we gather ourselves in the manner in which the Bible says, his word says, you are in the safest place possible. You know, 
the safest place that we can be in, in the midst of the chaos that is around us, is inside the will of God. My prayer for us is that we will put ourselves into the will of God. Amen? Amen. And then next is, Jesus gives us a future graduation. So now, you know, Jesus says, okay, um, these things must come to pass, but when you're seeing these things happen, I want you to know, I want you to know that the end is not yet. So in other words, it's not yet the end. It's not yet the time when he's coming back. It's not yet the time when, you know, there's tribulations that are happening. It's not yet the end. It is what? Just the? It's just the beginning. It's just the start of it. Right? It's just the start of it. And which means there's going to be an escalation of these things that is happening around us. Again, I'm sharing this not to scare us, but to prepare us. Amen? Not to scare us, but to prepare us. Ask your neighbor. Tanongin niyo sila, are you prepared? Are you prepared? Encourage the other person and say, let's be prepared. Let's be prepared. Right? Let's be prepared. Jesus is telling us that the occurrence of wars is just the beginning of signs, but not yet the end. Right? So, kumbaga, uh, like in the, in the airplane, you know, you can still use the bathroom. <laughs> Even though we're about to land, you, can, you still have that short window of time where you can still go to the bathroom, do what you need to do. You need to walk around, grab some water. You still have that time before you actually start landing into, the, into your destination. And the word here, and it's very interesting, the word here is the word, the word end is the word telos, or telos, or telos. Uh, what comes to your mind when you hear the word telos? Cell phone? <laughs> Cell phone? Yeah, and I, I thought about that and I said, yeah, it sounds like telos, but no. Another word is uh, the thing that we put in our eye. Telescope, right? Tell us. So the root word of tell us is the word tell. Uh, and its meaning is to is the word consummation or the end goal or the purpose or the closure. Um, the word tell means reaching an end or an aim. Sorry, it's a bit small. But the picture here is like a telescope, right? The old telescope. You know, it, uh, in the olden days, they have this telescope. When you do one like this, you see it's a zoom in. When you go the furthest, then it's the f furthest zoom that you can put in. And the Bible is saying here that the end that he's talking about, it's like a telescope. It is an unfolding or an extending out, uh, one stage at a time to function at a full strength. In other words, there is a gradual proceeding of these things that are to happen. So in other words, okay, stage one. Wars, pestilences, famines. Stage two, okay, heavens will pass away, right? Heaven and earth, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be natural disasters. Stage three, there's going to be persecutions. So Jesus is saying here, you know, the end is not yet because this is just stage one. Okay, so Jesus is preparing us already. Christians, brothers and sisters, you see this first sign. It's not going to end here. There's going to be more. So now what are you going to do? What are we going to do as a church? Okay. It's just level one. <laughs> right? And I'm sharing this not because I feel that I'm qualified or I'm prepared. No. I'm sharing this because it is like a wake-up alarm. I We need each one of us to be prepared. We need each one of us to be encouraged. Right? Because this is if this is just level one, then there's more things that are to happen. Watch. Just watch and see. Watch and see. But what does? Uh, but what is the end goal of this? Right. You know, I I talked about uh, I talked about the end, the wars. But this must not come to pass yet. But the end is not yet. But what does the end actually looks like? And I'm gonna end with this. <laughs> I'm gonna finish up uh, very shortly. 
And uh, in this ad, if we fast forward to the next verse, and by the way, there's a whole study that we can do, and it's a study of the book of Revelation that talks about the coming days, the end times. There's an actual study for it. It's not, it's not my goal for today to dissect that, but my goal for today is just to uh, sound the alarm and put the alarm. But there is a whole study about the end times if you want to learn about it. But um, as a summary, if you just read Matthew 24 onwards to Matthew 25, you will see the events that are going to happen. And this is ultimately the end. Matthew 25, 31 to 34. Let's all please read it together. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he will set the sheep on his right hands but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So what is some key words here? There is going to be a separation between the what? The sheep and the goat. Who in here is a sheep? Right. Who wants to be a goat? No one. Now, I hope no one. Goat, LeBron James greatest of all time <laughs> um, but I hope no one wants to be here is a goat I pray and I talked about earlier there's going to be kingdom against kingdom and this is the end when Jesus comes every tongue will confess every knee will bow and every tongue every mouth will declare that Jesus is Lord everyone all of it whether you like it or not you will make Jesus your Lord but it's up to you. Do you want to make him Lord today or do you want to make him Lord later? Because if you find out later that he is Lord, this is what's going to happen. Verse 41 says, Then he will also say to those who are in his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So in other words, there's going to be a sifting. At the end of it all, the goal, there is a sifting. Are you for God or are you against God? Are you living your life with God as him as your Lord or not? And that's going to be apparent in the next coming days. Darkness will cover the earth, right? But there's that, uh, where are we? Are we the light in this world? Because the world is getting darker and darker and it's not to, to scare us. But sometimes that is also good because the church must become brighter and brighter as well. Right? So the question is, are you a sheep or are you a goat? Right? Are you a sheep or are you a goat? When I first when I first made God my Lord and my Savior, my prayer to God, you know, Lord, use my life to the fullest. I don't want to hold anything back from you. I don't want to hold anything back because I want to be all in for you. All in. Right? And I believe that that kind of all in is what Jesus is saying here, right? If you are a sheep, you must be all in to God. If you are a goat, you will not be all in with God. So the question is, I'm not asking, and, and by the way, before I, I we're going to end, uh, by the way, and we can start to have the worship team up in the front. Um, this is called the gospel of the coming kingdom of God. We have the gospel of salvation, which says Jesus came here on earth, he died, and he rose. And whoever believes in Jesus, our sins will be forgiven, and we will have eternal life. But this is the gospel of the coming kingdom, which says there's going to be a coming kingdom here on earth. And it's up to you. Do you want to be in the kingdom of God, or do you not want to be in the kingdom of God? That is the question here today. And what is that? That is making him as our Lord. Not just our Savior, but our Lord. Because making him our Lord automatically makes him our Savior. But sometimes making him our Savior doesn't always mean that he is our Lord. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. 
And it's an ongoing process. And I'm not saying by no means that it is easy for us to make Jesus our Lord. But that's what's going to happen. Who is your loyalty going to be? Is it with Jesus or is it with not Jesus or the devil or the world? Right? That's what I have for us today. So I pray that we are going to be uh, in the kingdom of God. And I pray that we are going to be sheep for him. Hallelujah. Uh, let's, uh, siguro po, let's stand up and let's just pray to conclude this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, that you, in your word, Lord, we can find hope. In your word, Lord, we can find grace. In your word, Lord, we can ha- we can find direction. Lord, Father God, in your word, we know that we can rely on your word. That your word, Lord, is reliable. It is the truth of all truths, Lord, Father God. It is dependable, Lord. We can put our lives into it, Lord. It is a strong foundation in our lives. If we build our lives, Lord, into your word, we are called wise builders, Lord Father God. Not only putting our lives in your word, but doing what your word says, Lord Father God. And I pray for each one of us, Lord Father that we will be a wise builder where we are putting our lives and doing what the Word says, Lord Father. And for those of us, Lord, that may not have yet put our lives to you as our Lord, we ask you give us the grace to say those words, Lord Father. And we say, Lord, and we acknowledge that the way that we are doing our lives on our own is not correct because sometimes, most times our lives is away from what the word of God says so God, we ask for your grace to put our lives into your lordship, Lord Father into your lordship and ultimately making you our savior we say we repent, Lord, of the things that we are focusing on that is not right If there are some of us here in this room that may be feeling confused or anxious or maybe you know somebody that may be feeling anxiety or fear from what is happening around. Lord, we are praying over those people, Lord Father. We are saying, Lord, let fear be eradicated in the name of Jesus. That the perfect love of God be known and manifested to these people, Lord Father. I want you to know that if you put your life in me, you put your life into Jesus as your Lord, these fears will have no grip over your life in the name of Jesus. Whoever is listening, God is saying, your life into me. Make me your Lord. And these fears will go away. Guaranteed. 100%. So Lord Father God, we just we receive that word and we say, God, whatever fears we have, Lord, we are putting it into you, Lord Father God. Let it be known, Lord, today, CLSF Mississauga will not be a church that fears the world and what's happening, Lord. Only our fear is the fear of the Lord. It's the only fear that we will have in our hearts, Lord Father. And it's the reverential fear of the Lord. Because you are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we put our lives into you, Lord. We surrender everything to you, Lord Father God. Because we know that we can trust you. Thank you, Abba. Bless each and every one of us, Lord. And we plead the blood of Jesus over all of us.
Jesus, God. And in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen.